Hey guys, this is Virgil from We Supply. Let me show you how you can actually set up the returns. It's very easy, um, but pay attention because there are a lot of tricky elements. But let's get started. So first, let's head over to settings and click on returns. Here, you're going to see on the first part, you know, the return policies. We're going to get there shortly. But first, let me walk you through the entire system and just explain you a bit. Further down, you're going to be able to see the return reasons. Here you can add any reason. Um, these are basically too small, too large, you know, the color is off, you know, damaged in shipment. And here you can add as many reasons as you want, or you can delete any of them. Moving further down, we're talking about return control options. So this is basically Q, the QA steps your warehouse is going to take to review the product. So when you receive a product, is this product is in original packaging? Is it in resellable condition? Does it need to be cleaned? Whatever it might be, whatever your warehouse people are going to look at when they are receiving a product. So here as well, you can add any um, control option, any QA option of the product. Uh, moving down, uh, if you want to uh, include with every returns returns instructions. So this might be something like, um, yeah, put it back in the original packaging, make sure it's secured, make sure nothing is going to fall out. You put the, t the tape on it, etc. Make sure you ship it back to address X, Y, Z, whatever, you know, it's needed to give the customer as many clear instructions as possible. You can include those you know, with um, all the return communications. Next is the default return window. So this refers to um, the most common um, return policy that you might have. So you might have a default 30 days return policy and you might have some exceptions such as, you know, um, whatever products might have 60 days or 90 days or only 14 days, but those are going to be set up the exceptions as individual rules. The default return window um, is what return window applies to the majority of your products. In this situation, it would be 30 days. That's the most common. Um, and the next option is um, the return window start date. So when are you actually starting to count those 30 days from? And we give you all the options here. So when the order is placed, when the item is shipped, or when the delivery is, when the package is actually delivered. Um, by default, most of the brands are using item ship date. Um, whatever works best for you, um, you can choose. I recommend to use item ship date, but um, and definitely not order date because you never know how long it's going to take for you to actually process that order. Um, and if you want to be really nice with the customers, you can even choose item delivery date, which is the moment they actually receive that package. And because we track all the packages, we actually know when that package arrived. So we calculate those 30 days from that moment. Moving down the list, you can define what's your default package uh, length, width, height. You know, this is helpful information for uh, generating the return label. And you can define what's the weight of each product, you know. Um, and here, if you already define the weight within your system, when we import the orders, we should get that information. But if you do not have that info there, we can always fall back, you know, to um, default uh, value, which can be one pound or two pounds, whatever it might be. Um, next, you can pick here, what's your default return processor? Now, if you have a very simple integration with Shopify or Magento or whatever it might be, um, you're most likely going to issue everything through that system. However, if you have very complex system in place, such as ERPs, warehouse management systems, etc., you might want to choose here API. And in that situation, we are going to 
connect back to your ERP system and issue the refund directly into your ERP. But that usually requires um, um, a lot of integration. So if you're unsure about this, make sure you just leave it as default. Moving down, um, you have the return simulator. Here, after you have everything set up, you're going to be able to uh, simulate the return by selecting, you know, like the reason of return, whatever it might be. And it's going to tell you exactly which return uh, logic is going to apply. But we we're going to touch on that right after this. So moving forward, um, we're going to talk about uh, how to set up your first return logic and how to select and set up um, a courier to generate return labels. Stay tuned. That's a different video. <laughs> Take care.